<clears throat> Is that showing? I need to get rid of that. been like since you hung up your boots watching the story of this club from where you left off with it in particular uh, to the current day and all the chapters that have unfolded since you left well it's a lot more comfortable on my couch watching uh, games than <laughs> than it is out here running around and playing um, so there's that part which uh, is nice my body uh, thanks me on a daily basis that I'm done uh, grinding you know, but obviously I still follow the team and the club and the guys uh, pretty closely. And uh, it's, it's been really fun, especially recently, uh, to watch the team again, uh, to see where they're at, to, to be back in the playoffs, to be making a push here. Uh, the team is playing exciting soccer, uh, scoring a lot of goals. We're exciting to watch on the break. And we've got that uh, fear back, I think, uh, that other teams are, are scared of Atlanta United, especially on the break and especially here at the Benz, that maybe w hasn't always been there since, uh, since I left. Washington, after a three-week break, Atlanta United back to work tonight to start a 10-match sprint to the playoffs against a team that has also had a three-week break. The Seattle Sounders, like Atlanta United, knocked out of the League's Cup in the group stage. So two teams currently above the playoff line in their respective conferences looking to get back and forth tonight. There was a lot of pessimism, I think, outside the group. Boy, Atlanta United, look, look at those tough road games where they have to go to the West Coast. They have to play at Dallas. They're going to have to play at Philadelphia. Decision day against Cincinnati. That could be a disaster if they don't take care of business at home. So it did absolutely look very daunting. I, I think the Seattle game kind of proved to us very quickly that there was not going to be a hangover from League's Cup. At the very beginning, we go for everything. We try to challenge them. They feel they're so good in this stadium, we challenge them because we're going to be better tonight. Okay, off the ball, we dictate the aggression and the intensity of the ball. On the ball is exactly the same. Aggression, everybody wants the ball. Everybody's showing for the angles. Everybody's combining. Everybody's playing and moving. Everybody dictates the best game on the ball because we are good when we are on the ball. We need the three points and we're going to do it. Come on! Come on, boys. We don't I know how difficult it is to play in, in Seattle. It's very difficult, the atmosphere of the stadium, uh, the turf, especially the opponent is one legendary team. Uh, in the last 10 years, it's probably the best franchise in, in MLS. So uh, it's very difficult to go there and dominate the game. When Shade Silva went for the Rabona, I think Jason and I both went, whoa, this is, this is going to be a lot different now. He's up to it. He strikes it out. Swinger to the penalty spot. Henry Yakabakis scores! It was nice because when I arrived, the team had lost the last game, you know, and we needed some, like a win, you know. Be able to be there and help the team to get the three points was like amazing, you know. I thought Shande Silva and Tristan Mayumba right off the bat just blended in so perfectly with this team in areas where Atlanta United was getting stretched out a little bit. Returns it to Almada. Almada with a pitch to Yakabakis. Header! Score! Goal up! And Atlanta United wins in Seattle for the first time in club history. When we have nights like that, I think we do, it not only gives us that ability to believe uh, that what we're doing is working, but it gives us that confidence to move forward. And, and when we play the way that we did, we know that we can compete with anyone in this league and not only compete, but, but ultimately win important games. And I think that was, a, that was a massive one for us. Well, I thought that was Atlanta United's best overall performance of the entire season to that point. And that was after we said in Seattle. Well, that was Atlanta United's best performance of the season to that point. 
Freeman blows the whistle and we are underway. Amada dribbling into the attacking third. Pitch to the back post. Silva. Falling. Goal! Goal also! To be honest, when I saw the ball arriving, I just closed my eyes and just boom. Finishing. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Sometimes we do, some, we do some things that we don't, even us, we don't expect, you know, like it just, just like that, you know. And uh, when I saw the ball like arriving, my mind I just said, like, I'm here. Let me just try something, you know, or let me just kick the ball and we see what's going, what's going to happen. Trapped at the top of the arc, went to the head, Almada, edge of the six, chip, score! I think they were playing with a joyfulness, a confidence, and maybe a slight element of surprise. Seventh minute, Almada going to the back post, header, score! Miles Robinson! Now, the Atlanta United debut. Saba Lovanicia, and Allen dribbles towards goal. Now Mata dribbling into the box, popped ahead. Saba back to Almada at the near post, to the edge of the net. Saba back heel, score! In Nashville, disculpa, pero ese partido nosotros estaba jugando muy bien. Podría dar pega patada, pero nosotros estaba volando en la cancha y creo que ese gol de Shani cambió mucho. Eh, los fanáticos también le ayudaron mucho nosotros con la energía y bueno, y el sentimiento que y jugar en casa y jugar bien eh, es único. It was surprising for me to listen after after the match that it was the worst loss in, in their history and actually they they never lost a game for three goals ever. You can uh, understand the magnitude of that victory uh, because of the type of opponent we're facing. I remember the feeling in the locker room afterwards, of course, there was joy, excitement, um, and when you have that, it's a, it's a feel-good factor, but one that you want to keep keep it going um, in, into the next couple games. Riddles, another cross block to Mascara, who slams the kick! A beautiful team goal in the 10th minute. There's not a lot separating Atlanta United from the team that ended up running away from everyone and winning the Supporter Shield. Uh, they had the early lead. I think they ran out of gas. Lost to the top of the yard, back to a cast of shot, score. Against those type of opponents, you need 90 minutes of full concentration. Uh, we, we saw that against Cincinnati. We were very good for 70 minutes and winning the game, but you fall asleep or you you know, uh, slow down a little bit, and those type of opponents, they, they keep going. Hasn't called that foul all night. Down the middle, Acosta at the top of the arc, ahead to Montreal, his cross shot, score! Cincinnati, in person, looked like the most complete, best overall team in the league to me at that point. Atlanta United wasn't that far away from them, and I thought that was a really, really good sign. I don't know if you can take much confidence out of a loss, but to me, the fact that Atlanta United was trading punches with them until maybe that fatigue started to set in, I, I thought was a good sign. You know, for us, it, it was obviously a disappointing result in terms of how it finished. Um, but I think the fact that it left such a disappointing feel and, and taste in our mouth, it, it shows that we, we're not a million miles away from, from where we want to be. And, and, we know that, you know, come the playoffs, to be able to compete and, and do, do something special in the playoffs, we're going to have to find ways to win those games. You know, you're kind of in this stretch now where it's match after match after match, and you're playing on the midweek, and you're just trying to manage everything from a fitness standpoint and manage everything from a mental standpoint. And Dallas out of jail now. It's Ariola and Pereira crashed down the middle, and here comes Camundo as well, 3v3. I don't know if we started well or bad. It was so early in the game in that one, that, uh, and it was a mistake slash referee decision that put us in that situation because it was an easy ball. Well marked by Robinson, shoulders and the ball, and then Pereira pushes it down at the end line, they don't call the foul, and it's scored by Dallas, that is incredible. Nine out of ten uh, plays like that, the referee calls a foul, or 
our defender takes care of that and makes sure that the ball goes out of bounds. He's a goalkeeper for us, we start our attack. Uh, but that didn't happen, so it's almost like we started the game 1 0 down. Uh, but then the reaction of the team is, is normally good after those moments. In those types of games, the, the back and forth and you know, the, the resiliency and, and determination to, to come back and, and find a way to, to get back in the game, I think that's going to be huge moving forward. Shava with the touch. Shot! Goal! Atlanta United gets a draw and finishes the season unbeaten against the Western Conference. I feel like two points were lost here but also they came back from 1-0 down to get into the lead, so I don't know, conflicted feelings. Ese partido fue un partido que nosotros queríamos jugar mucho, hasta porque perdimos la clasificación y la Miami ahí. This was a team that was still playing very well even without Messi. They had not lost since the start of the Messi era. It was a special one. You knew that it was going to be a full stadium. The expectation from you know, the, the fan base uh, was we have to win this game. Messi or no Messi, I do not care. We have people in our home trying to take what's ours. Let's go! I, th I thought this was an opportunity where Atlanta United, was, they can be the first team to do this now. They can be the first MLS team to beat Messi and to beat Inter Miami. I'm gonna start quickly with these guys because they changed the tactics. You see the lineup, they're gonna play 4-3-3. So we don't press like, we press like normal. Now, in the middle block, you have a half in between the center backs, you go with one, the opposite winger goes. The one has to be inside you, in your heart, because you love football. You love football. Go back to that feeling tonight and play because you love the game, because you want the ball more than anyone else. And with that, we have to press. We have to regain the ball as soon as possible. And then we start to create chances because we are Atlanta United and we're getting the three points tonight. Come on! Are, you're feeling really good about yourself. You're trying to entertain 70,000 people at home, and you have a one in a million goal scored against you. So honestly, there wasn't a kind of any hesitation or doubts on our team. It was more like, come on, we need to start to catch up here and start to create more chances, and then we know it's normal for us to score goals. Ahead to Lennon, right in line. Cross header off the post and in. Tristan in my mind, you know, when I'm 1v1 with the defender, I don't care who he is, how good he is, you know. If you're better than me, just try to take the ball. the six, it's cross, no goal! Team Caleb Wiley with the cross, trapped by Lennon, shot, score! Three goals in seven minutes! And Atlanta United's got a 3-1 lead! This guy, Miller, is panicking. Panicking with the speed of you two. Uh, on the left side, they are panicking with your speed. I demand more from you if you give me this. Okay, I need that. Isolate the wingers, 1v1. Tactically, we're okay. Anything else? No? Okay. Whistle by Maruco. Campania up to the ball very, very slowly. Strikes it and scores. And it's a 3-2 match in the 53rd minute. Saba Love Janitsa coming on for Atlanta United. Right flank. He goes to Saba. Right side of the 18, cross the Akbar, shot, score! Saba, ahead now to Wolf, shot, score! I think they made a statement, because Inter-Miami, yeah, Messi wasn't playing, but they had a lot of good players on the pitch that night. And that was a red-hot team that Atlanta United really kind of disrupted their momentum. I don't think anyone should demean what Atlanta United did that night uh, because Lionel Messi could not play. I thought it was the exact style of football again that this club is built to play. Who wants off tomorrow? Yeah, he wants off tomorrow. Who wants? Tiago, you want off? Yeah, Who wants off? I'll take you. Guys, of course, I cannot be more proud of you. No puede estar más orgulloso de ustedes. 
the character, the personality, the mentality after coming down 1-0 with all the environment, you know, everything we talk about. It's not about Messi, it's not about Tata, it's not about Joseph, about Interman. It's not about anything of that. It was about Atlanta United, and you made it happen. People tomorrow will be talking about Atlanta United. They won't be talking about Messi or Inter Miami. So it was all about you guys and the hard work that you did. And the expectation that we had on all of you was right there. Thiago Almada, you break the record of assists for the club in, the, in Atlanta United history. 15 assists. Congratulations. Great job. Great job. <laughs> Brooks Lennon. Brooks Lennon, another high record in goals. 10 assists, first time in your career. Congrats, my friend. Very good. Off tomorrow, guys. Come on. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a match where Atlanta United scored first, but it felt like after they scored the goal, they were kind of hanging on. So Atlanta United, I, unfortunately, just was not able to sustain the intensity for all 90 minutes. I detected afterwards that there was a little bit of disappointment for Atlanta United that they didn't get three points, which again, I think speaks to the evolution of this club where you're not playing for road draws anymore. You're playing for road wins. And I think they're a little bit disappointed that they didn't get the road win. Tonight, a spot in the playoffs is on the plate for Atlanta United. All they need to do is win here tonight on their home field against Montreal. Tonight, it's about whatever it takes for that thing on the front of our shirt. Whatever it takes, we give everything we have tonight. We come out of here with three points. Job done. That's the bottom line. Three points. Come on, come on, come on Driving in the head to Saba. Trapped at the top of the box. Here's his cross. Shot. Silva. Score! It was, I would say, one of the most dominant games where we did. dribbles into the box. Here's his cross. Silva again. He crosses line. Silva to the end line. Cross. Shot. Score! It felt to me like a continuation of maybe what started in the Nashville match at home, where Atlanta United at Mercedes-Benz Stadium was becoming a team that was very, very difficult to break down. Move the Akamakis! And it will be Tristan Mayer Buck. He will come off for Edwin Mascara. Now the Atlanta debut for Jamal Tiare. Ahead to Almada, right side of the 18. Cut back cross, Mascara. Shot! Score! We're back. I mean, this is what we're used to for Atlanta United. We're used to seeing this fun, attacking, play on the front foot soccer. Yes, it was a very special moment. It was um, kind of a good step towards our goal. But at the same time, I have to let the players and the staff know that this franchise has to be, this has to be the minimum, the bare, bare minimum. The, the mentality of this club has to be like that. We have to dream big and we have to work every day towards those dreams and make sure that they become reality at some point. And uh, it was a special moment, yes, but I tried to be kind of more measured, uh, making sure that every, everyone understands that the limits are way higher. Creo que esos partidos como Filadelfia, Cincinnati, que son equipos muy buenos, creo que tenemos siempre que tener cuidado con los detalles. Anytime you go to Philly, it's a difficult game. Um, whether it's the, the, the crowd, but, but for me, most importantly, it's, it's the way they play and how they're, they're organized and, and their, um, their understanding of what they're trying to do as a team, they do it extremely well. Atlanta United, I felt, was the victim of a very, very unlucky game of officiating. What appeared to be a pretty clear and obvious handball, not sent down by the VAR for review. We fall asleep five minutes against them. Uh, goal, first goal was in 39th minute, right, if I remember right. We suddenly, out of a game that we were completely in control, completely in control, 
uh, creating some half chances, little chances, uh, maybe arguably some PKs, and and then suddenly we go six minutes later at the, in the locker room, three nil down. I don't think Atlanta United reacted very well at all, and that's not on the referee, and that's on Atlanta United. We we lost the go the game because of us, not because of the referee's decisions uh, on PKs or nothing like that. It was us. It was self. Uh, damage so we need to do better in those moments and then the lesson was okay this already happened at halftime what are we going to do about it and it's off the elbow it's off of Carranza. Carranza. I mean, that's a handball it's a handball it took him a while but that's a handball close his whistle Almada up to the ball he strikes it score and Atlanta United gets one back here in the 56th minute. It's 3-1 Philadelphia. It's into the box, right side. Ahead to Lennon at the end line. Cut back, cross, shot! Diving team link! Rebound inside the six. William Blunt, that's the end shot! Score! It's 3-2! Mascara! Mascara! And Atlanta United is right back in it in the 77th minute. Popped ahead now, Fortune at the end line. Cross, blocked out. I've supported the club since its beginning. Uh, I took my time to figure out which group was for me uh, throughout the 2017 season. And 2018, I ended up joining Resurgence. It felt the most com comfortable for me. And uh, luckily now, since 2018, I have the closest group of friends I could ever ask for through this club. One thing that I always say is whenever I'm up here, I wanna make sure I create the most intimidating environment for the, op the, the opposing side. So making it as loud as possible, whether I walk out with a voice or not, um, it doesn't matter if I, as long as I can say that I did my job and helping this team, you know, gain confidence and secure a win, my job's done. This game could mean getting top four, getting a home field advantage. It could mean everything. Obviously, we have a couple of players that are making a homecoming, being Darlington Nagby and Julian Gressel. Obviously, that's a very heartwarming moment for me, uh, seeing those guys out here. But at the end of the day, they're on the opposite team. I'm not looking at them. I'm looking at what we can do to, you know, bring our boys home to win. They are going to press, so when they pass, we have to move again to help the guy we pass the ball to. They're running off the back of our shoulders and playing one-twos and all the we knew they're going to do. We need to do the same Every time we do one-twos, we get acres of space to run at them. This guy goes there, maybe that's where we can change, and they do an aggressive three-step. Understand? Communication, Saba and Tristan, okay? Offensively, guys, which is for me the main part because, guys, we need to enjoy a little bit more the ball. Saba, I told you to stay wide, all the way wide, because this guy is jumping here, and at times he doesn't know what to do with you, Brooks. Brooks, you are normally free, right? Yeah. We have to make sure that we understand that we were creating some chances. Let's keep it more, okay? Come on, Dale, Dale, Dale. First to the top of the box. Morris ahead to Cucho, shot, score. The one thing about Atlanta United in 2023 is they do not quit. Tiago Almada with hands on hips. Up to it. Strikes it. Back post. Header. enough to give Atlanta United home field advantage, but it's something to feel good about in their final regular season home match. They steal a point right at the end. Por más que sufrimos un gol, no no bajamos la la intensidad. En la segunda mitad creo que jugamos mejor y empatamos uno a uno, un resultado que creo que bueno para los dos equipos, pero bien no jugado que Colombo jugó y nosotros también. I think I think that's something I love about my players and, and the team. It is uh, that fight, that little rebel feeling that you have inside of you that against adversity, 
you know, put the head down and you are the more, no, 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 no. Someone punch you in the face and then you are ready for the second round and you go there up to the fight. And, and, and that's the mentality of a winner team, in my opinion. You know, the, the outcome of the match in Cincinnati probably won't go too far in dictating where Atlanta United will be playing in the first round of the playoffs, but I think it's very, very important to establish some forward momentum to the playoffs in Cincinnati and what a great place to attempt to do that and one of the great stadiums in this league. You've put your best against us here over the last couple weeks in Philadelphia, Columbus and now Cincinnati and we've gone toe to toe with all three. We're not going to be an easy out in the postseason. Atlanta United is the team that no one is going to want to have to play in these playoffs. Yeah, so heading to the airport, you know, I tend to, um, you know, my thoughts are, of course, starting to prepare for for the opposition, in this case, Cincinnati, um, but not over, not overthink, not overanalyze, um, you know, obviously with, with four kids, I'm also thinking about their schedules and whatnot, um, and so uh, making sure everything's, um, you know, all, all situated and, and sorted at, at home and you know my wife does a good job obviously of, of making sure we're we're all where we need to be when we need to be there yeah I mean I'm not one to, to overanalyze and overthink and so I don't uh, I don't go too crazy the the day before you know come tomorrow for for Cincinnati it's a, it's about understanding that yeah, it's a real opportunity to, to prove ourselves, to, to test ourselves, um, and you know all the different things that that are going to be required from from us as a group um, will be hugely important. And, and a lot of those things that will be needed for tomorrow will also be needed in a week's time for the playoffs. And and so understanding what the atmosphere will be like tomorrow um, will be very similar to to the playoff atmosphere a week later. We want to we want to send a statement and we want to do that, you know, of course by playing well, but ultimately we want to do that by by winning games and, and advancing in the playoffs and and hopefully by the end of it we're lifting a trophy because um, you know, we always talk about Atlanta United and, and wanting to be a big club and, and making progress towards being a big club. And, um, you know, with that comes the responsibility of, of lifting trophies. And, and that's what we're going to try to do. And a pleasant good evening to you from TQL Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have made it to decision day in Major League Soccer, the 34th and final match of the regular season for Atlanta United. They're spotted the playoffs secure, but over the next two hours, we will learn where they will be seated and who they will play next weekend. Almada who drives forward now, ahead to Saba, down the right wing, into the box, Saba, pass to Yakamaka, shot, SCORE! Boom, Yakamaka! Atlanta United, the early lead in the 12th minute, a beautiful team goal, Almada to Saba to Yakamaka, this is cross shot, SCORE, Baji. In an instant, Cincinnati finds the equalizer against the run of play. Saba, the right attacking third. Dribble, dribble, dribble to the edge of the 18. Saba cuts it back now to Almada, right corner of the 18. Bouncing cross, Yakamaka, shot! Score! Golasso! And it's 2-1 Atlanta United! Now to Bob Royal, fakes the cross. Saba jump, Bob Royal now pitched to the penalty spot. Header, score, Acosta! You are seeing superstars on both these teams exploding here in the first half tonight. It's 2-2. Now dribbles centrally. There's contact at the edge of the 18 and a foul. 
Oh my God. Tiago Almada has just been sent off and will be suspended for the playoff game. Oh my God. How does that happen? Oh, for full time, yes, they'll do it there. That is a very brave 10 v 11 draw. Atlanta United. They do nothing to improve their seed tonight, but I think this gives them a lot of momentum going into the postseason with a 2-2 draw, a very well-played match before the red card by Atlanta United. And they will play Columbus in a best-of-three first-round series next weekend, and we'll have a matchup of the top two goal-scoring teams in MLS. What's the destiny of this year's team? What will you guys do this year? What are we going to do this year? I want to be champion. I want to win the title. I really want to be the title. Win the title. I don't know what the other guys think about it, but me, I want to win the title. Yeah, have a like, good time. Quality time. We don't know what the destiny holds yet. We, we know that what they're capable of. Right? We know that they can beat anybody on any day. Um, and that's what's so exciting as a fan, right? To know that we can do it, right? The destiny might be another MLS Cup. Um, but that's the beauty of it, is, is not knowing quite what that destiny is going to be for the rest of the year. And that's what makes these games so exciting, right? To see where, where are they going to take us, right? Because we're on this ride with them. And, and, you know, it's up to the players and the staff and the team to, to see what that destiny is going to be. Because we're going to push them as much as we can as fans and supporters of the club. Uh, and we're going to be there along for the ride, hoping that we do get to witness uh, a pretty dang good destiny again.